Hi, my name is Ulrich and today we will have a look at how to install vSphere 7 with Tanzu and using the NSX Advanced Load Balancer. So uh, to actually start, we need to have a vSphere 7 environment uh, with Enterprise Plus license as we need to have DRS and HA enabled on the vSphere cluster. We need to have a vSphere cluster with three physical hosts. And what I will cover first is the network setup that is needed to actually get everything up and running. So what we need is to have three physical uh, networks uh, represented on one distributed vSwitch. So each of the networks need to be represented by a distributed port group. One is the front end network covering all the load balancing services. One is the management network connecting all the management components and one of the workload network uh, hosting the Kubernetes cluster VMs. You need to have at least one workload network, but you can have multiple of them. So uh, I will be using these port groups and these uh, IP uh, network segments. Um, they are just for demo purposes, they are slash 24 uh, to make the setup a little bit easier, but you can have smaller or bigger networks as well. So uh, in my case, the vCenter is on the same management network as the rest of the components, but this does not need to be the case. It just needs to be routed. All three networks need to be routed. And then in my case, there's no firewalling between these three networks um, makes the setup a lot easier. I would recommend this for a POC as well. So the first component that will be installed is the NSX Advanced Load Balancer. This is a controller of everything. That's needs a single OVA file that we will deploy and it just gets a single IP address. All the numbers that you see now will be the IP addresses that we will be, will be using for the rest of the of the video. Uh, if you have a production setup, this will be not a single local uh, controller VM, but three the controller VMs uh, using a VIP as well to have high availability uh, for the controller component. Uh, when we install the uh, Tanzu component in vCenter. This will roll out a supervisor cluster or supervisor control plane VMs. These are three VMs and they need to have uh, five IP addresses in consecutive order. And the first three IP addresses are used for each of the VMs. And there's a fourth IP address for the VIP of the uh, control plane VMs. And there's a fifth IP address needed during uh, upgrades. This IP address uh, is only used during the upgrade process. Uh, the second uh, interface of these supervisor control plane VMs is on the workload network and it's only on the first workload network. So if you have additional workload networks, there is no additional interface in the supervisor control plane VMs and the traffic uh, always goes through the primary workload network. So once you install this, the NSX load balancer uh, will roll out what's called service engines. These service engines uh, are two service engines uh, they are always in a group and um, they uh, provide all the load balancing services on the front end network. And as you can see, this is this uh, one arm setup, which means they have one arm in the front end network and one for the management network. All the management traffic of the NSX load balancer uh, to the uh, service engines is running through the management network. All the exposed front end services will be running on the front end network. And also the SEs are using the front end network to reach the services in the workload network. So this is one of the reasons why this is a one arm construct and why the networks needs to be routed. So uh, once these are up, um, they will basically provide a VIP address for the supervisor control plane VMs as well, so that you do not need to be on the management network uh, as a developer or as a user to actually reach them. They can uh, be reached through the VIP IP address on the front end network. So if you provide your Kubernetes clusters, the first thing that you will create in the vCenter is you create a namespace in the vCenter. And within that uh, namespace, you can select which workload control uh, workload network uh, should be used. If you only have one, there's basically this primary workload network that you're using, and this will roll out your Kubernetes cluster. The VMs are running on the workload network, and on top of it, you can choose between two network uh, CNIs, so container network interfaces. Uh, it's ISA Andrea or Calico. And uh, the Kubernetes API gets a VIP as well, 
are provided by the service engines so that your cluster is reached, uh, reachable without connecting to the workload network directly. If you expose any services within your cluster as a type load parenter, this will also be exposed through the service engines on your uh, front end network as well. Um, so if you have multiple clusters, obviously in the same namespace or through multiple namespaces, they will all be reachable through the SEs as your uh, load balancing services. So this is the spreadsheet that we will be using for the rest of the video and you can download it on the link below. This is our lab environment uh, consisting of three ASXi hosts. I already provisioned the three uh, pod groups on our distributed vSpace, the front end uh, group, the workload group, and the management group. And I've got an additional one for a later video um, as well. So the first step is to actually provision our NSX Advanced Load Balancer controller, uh, deploy the OVA, select the file, and I'm using the latest release as of this uh, video. Uh, and we will call it just ALB controller for advanced load balancer controller. Um, select our cluster. Select our storage. And now we need to select our network and make sure to select the stuff that we uh, put into our uh, spreadsheet. And we need to have the uh, management network and we need to have the IP address for our uh, controller as well. So I'm just selecting it here. Uh, it's at slash 24, so putting in the network mask uh, the default gate is uh, one, and all the rest of the information is needed for an NSX uh, overlay network, which we don't have. And then hit finish, and once the application, uh, once the OVA is deployed, uh, start the application. Once the OVA is deployed, we will just start it up and uh, wait until the web interface is available on the IP address that we specified. Okay, so the VM is up and running, putting in the IP address. Uh, yeah, it's not a good certificate yet. Um, so the first set up, uh, thing to set up is the admin password, and we need to specify this as well. So, um, Uh, you can put in an IP address, uh, an email address, uh, but that's purely optional. Create the account. And now we need to specify a passphrase for the backup. Um, confirm it as well. Uh, and now you need to specify your DNS host. Uh, in my case, I don't have a local DNS. I'm using just public ones. So in your case, that would be probably different and uh, specify your uh, search domain. I have put in all the information into the uh, spreadsheet as well. So next, uh, we do not need to have any uh, email set up. So we skip that. Uh, and for the multi-tenancy, leave everything as is as of right now. Um, select set up cloud after because we want to configure the cloud component as well. So we do this later. So save. And now you can already see, okay, we need to provide a license key and it wants, to, uh, wants us to put in some licensing information. So the first thing, mm -hmm that we will do is basically um, change the license to the essential license key because that's the one that's uh, included in the Tanzu offering and Tanzu standard and Tanzu basic. And we that's what we wanna use. So go for, to administration, um, click on to settings, click on licensing and uh, click on the gear icon. 
clicking on save. Okay, as you can see now, uh, the UI changed. It wants us to put in a license key and we basically are in the essential notice and we can only use features that are available in the essential license. Okay, so we do not need to change anything else yet. So the next step is we wanna configure our default cloud. Um, so what we need to do is go to infrastructure and go to clouds. Uh, and you can see we haven't set any orchestrator yet. So we need to click on here uh, on the gear icon and select the um, uh, vSphere uh, version. So because we are in the essential mode, we can only select vSphere, uh, put in continue, and we will automatically be put into the setup mode for our vSphere orchestrator. So in my case, I need to, uh, so now we need to specify the username for the vCenter. So um, I'm putting in the information of the spreadsheet. Uh, I need to put in the vCenter IP or DNS name. And I need to put, specify the uh, password. Uh, it needs to have write access and all the other information uh, we will set up later. Next, now it will check the connection to the vCenter. Everything looks fine. And you can see it's uh, populating these menus with the uh, live information from the vCenter. So uh, we don't have any DHCP running. If you have DHCP running, it's a different setup, um, but I'm using static IPs. So I will say uh, prefer um, uh, and we will just select uh, prefer static routes here and we'll set up the IP address management later for the management network. Uh, next, so now we'll check everything and set it up. So now we need to specify the management network. So our management network, so you can see it's reading the uh, network information directly from the vCenter. We are using our management interface here we don't have any template for the service engines yet. Uh, we are not using DHCP. Uh, we are using our management network and we need to specify the management network, which was the 16 slash 24. And we need to specify our static address IP pool. The, these, ad, this address pool is used by our service engines and uh, it's, uh, the IPs of the service engine's management interface is taken from this IP pool. So if we go back to our uh, spreadsheet and what I selected is this one. So actually this uh, IP pool only need to, uh, needs to be able to contain two IP addresses. Um, yeah, but yeah, just to have a little bit more in there um, and just uh, specify the IP address and we are fine. And once we hit save, everything is set up and you can see everything is green and now we've configured our default cloud and so um, so we're good to go for this part. So the next thing is we need to make sure to switch the certificate of our um, NSX uh, load balancer here. And for that we go to templates and we are going to uh, security and there uh, we are going to SSL TLS certificates. The reason why we need to change the, um, the certificate of the controller is that the controller certificate does not contain the IP address that we specified and then uh, the certificate is uh, regarded as invalid by the supervisor cluster later. So we need to create a new controller certificate and we need to specify a name and let's call it RV controller. And you can see I already did this in the past. Uh, we need to set in a common name. This is either the IP address or the DNS name and I have both available. So in my case, this is the DNS name. I do not need to specify anything of this one and make sure to put the in the IP address into the subject alternative name as well. So in my case, so uh, there's the IP address and uh, we need to make sure that this is in the certificate as well. Save and then let's continue. There's our RV controller certificate. 
And now the next thing is that we actually need to assign the new controller certificate to the controller as well. So we are going to administration again to settings and there we use the access settings and we need to switch this certificate. And what we do here is we are removing these two default certificates. We are selecting our new RV controller certificate. And uh, on top of that, we need to enable allow basic authentication for our um, Kubernetes setup later. Uh, hit save. This now will switch the certificates. This takes a short uh, few seconds. Uh, if you now reload the page, uh, or reload it again. There you see it. Now the certificate is uh, changed. Um, we accept it again and we are back in the menu to be able to uh, configure the next steps. So the next thing that we need to configure is the service engines and for that we go to infrastructure, uh, go to cloud resources and go to service engine group. There's the default service engine group and we need to configure that. And what you can see here now, it automatically selected legacy mode, active standby. That's the mode that's support with the essential license. All the other modes are only available with the enterprise or with higher licensing uh, in here. The one thing that I would change is the number of virtual services per service engine. And so the default value is 10. You can turn it up to 1000 uh, at the highest number. And that's the number of uh, load balancing services that you have. If you leave it at 10, you can only create 10 uh, load balancing services. So each cluster that you create will consume one of these uh, load balancing services. And every th service that you expose via type load balancer will also consume one of these uh, IPs. So if we only have 10, that's not a high number. So let's change it uh, to 100 and we are good to go. You can see also by activating the uh, essential license, we are limiting ourselves to two service engines. Okay, that's uh, just making sure that these are in here. And the next thing is in the advanced one, we can actually select where to place the uh, service engine. And we select our Tanzu cluster. So that's our vSphere cluster. And you can specify all hosts. I will just make sure that they're running on all hosts. Um, that's purely optional and then hit save. Now we can figure out the uh, service engine. The uh, next thing is we need to configure our networks. And for that, we go to infrastructure again and then to networks. And you can see it uh, detected all the networks from our distributed V switch and from our uh, standard switch uh, as well. And we will now configure the front end network because it didn't discover anything uh, regarding the front end network because we have static IP addresses and no DHCP enabled. Okay, so uh, as you can see, there's no DHCP uh, set up here. So we need to manually add uh, the stuff as well. So we hit add subnet and the subnet of the front end network. If we go back to our uh, spreadsheet, you can see this is the subnet of our front end network that we want to use. Uh, and on top of that, we need to add a static pool as well. So these are the IP addresses for the load balancing services that can be used within that subnet. And uh, if you want to look here, um, I selected 10 to 200 uh, as values, but you can use more or less depending on what your network uh, environment allows you to do. So we hit save and uh, save again. And now our front end network is uh, set up as well. The next thing that we need to do is to have routing. As I said, we have one leg uh, or one arm set up and we need to hit uh, uh, set up a default route as well so that, we, uh, that the ALB knows how to reach the services within your Kubernetes cluster. So where are the VMs of your Kubernetes cluster? So hitting create. Uh, we need to set a uh, uh, default uh, route. So put in this as well. And the next top is the gateway of your front end network. So in our case, the front end network, if we look back here, the front end network is 14. 
and we can just copy it directly from our front end network here and hit save. And now the uh, front end network is set up as well. So next thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that the LB knows which IPC it should use, uh, uh, use. So we need to have an IPAM as well. And for that, we need to go back to templates, to uh, profiles, we are already on profiles, and we need to select IPAM and DNS profile. We say create new IPAM profile. Uh, with the essential license, we can only create uh, an IPAM profile. We cannot create a DNS profile. So we name this Tanzu IP, for example. I'll leave everything as is, and we need to select um, uh, a usable network. That's our default cloud that we configured earlier. Uh, we need to create, select a network that we can use. That is our front end network that we just configured. And hit save. And now we have the IPAM configured as well. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to actually assign that IPAM to our default cloud. For that, we go back to infrastructure. We go to clouds. Uh, we have here our default cloud setup. We click on the edit button. And there we need to select our uh, newly created IPAM profile. And now we can hit uh, save and I'll make sure that everything is green here. And now uh, we finished our setup for the NSX Advanced Load Balancer. So now we are back in uh, the vCenter and um, before we can start the installation of our supervisor cluster, we need to prepare a few additional things. So we need to go to the content library because we need to have a content library, say create, name the content library, for example, Tanzu. And next, uh, say we want to subscribe to the content library and what you need to specify as an URL is uh, this one. Uh, it's also in the description down below. And uh, there are two things. You can either th say immediately downloading all the OVA files in that content library or when needed. I will choose when needed so we uh, do not download 27 OVAs as of this recording. Uh, I need to uh, uh, accept the fingerprint of it. Uh, I don't have any security policies for it. I uh, select my storage and that's it. And now we have a content library in here. Uh, you can see it's currently syncing the content library. And now if we click on it, you can see there are all the OVA files, uh, 27 seven in total, uh, containing all the Kubernetes uh, version. The next step is to create a storage policy. So we go to our, back to our inventory, select storage, and you can see this is the storage that I want to use. And we need to have a storage policy on, in place for the installation and for our Kubernetes clusters. And currently I don't have one. So we create a new one based on tags. Uh, we say assign and we don't have a tag here. So we add a tag. Uh, and the name for the tag is Tanzu. And I want to have a new category as well. Uh, and we select a new category based and just say Kubernetes. Say create. And now we have a tag and a category. And we assign that tag with this category to our storage. So the next thing is we need to assign a storage policy. So we go to policies and profiles. And we want to create a new storage pro, uh, policy. So we hit uh, create the new storage policy that we want to create. We will name it Tanzu storage. Um, make sure to use a DNS compliant name in this case. Um, you can create it uh, any way you like, but for, within the Kubernetes cluster, we need to have this name to be uh, DNS compliant and um, it will automatically change anything that's not DNS compliant to a DNS compliant name later. And then the UI and the YAML file do not match. So it's easier to just name it a DNS compliant right from the start. So hit next. And we want to have the uh, tech based one uh, next. And we select our Kubernetes category um, and uh, we browse the tags. 
we use the Tanzu tag that we just created. Hit next. You can see it selected our storage. Hit next. Uh, hit finish. And now everything is set up um, so that we can start with the installation of our supervisor control plane. Okay, for uh, installing the supervisor control plane, we go to workload management. And um, in your case, you probably will see, if you hit it the first time, you will see a menu where you put in your, uh, your name, your email address and everything, and then you get a 60 day trial license. I already did this. And then you land on this page and hit get started. And we'll basically ask you uh, if you wanna install NSX or distributed vSwitch. We don't have NSX, we are using the advanced load balancer. So VDS is correct. We select our Kubernetes cluster and you can see our clusters marked as uh, compatible. Uh, if it's not the case, it will be listed under incompatible and it will show you the, um, the reasons why it's not compatible. Uh, and then you need to fix that. So next, we need to uh, select the storage that we wanna use for our control plane. And that's the policy that we just created. So our tons of storage, next. And now we need to put in the information for our RV uh, controller or NSX about load, load balancer. You need to have a DNS compliant name. I'll just name it uh, RV in my case. We need to specify the IP address at port. So this was one. Of, and we just make sure that everything is correct. We just look it up from the spreadsheet so that we do not make, make a mistake here. And the port that we need to specify is 443. Uh, we need to specify our admin user and we need to put in the password. The password And now we need to put in the uh, certificate from the RV controller. So we go back to our RV controller. And we go to templates um, and then to policy, uh, security, sorry, SSL certificates. And we select our RV controller and say uh, copy certificate. We copy this certificate in here and hit the next. And the next thing that we need to do is we need to configure the management network. Uh, the management network is in, in static mode in our case. We select the management network, that's this one from our uh, spreadsheet as well. and we need to specify the starting IP address um, uh, from our uh, interface as well. So we need to specify the starting IP address from our uh, spreadsheet. And we select it here and put in the information as well. And our subnet mask, and the gateway. One, it's taking the DNS information from the vCenter. Um, yeah, our search domain and our NTP servers, uh, also from the spreadsheet, it's the easiest. And next, the next setup is our workload network, which is also a static setup and it will automatically generate the internal Kubernetes networks that we are using. And this is a slash 23 network. And uh, now we are using our workload network and we're just using this uh, workload network name uh, as is. And um, the next thing is we need to use the IP ranges that we wanna use for our workload network. Um, so in this case, we are looking back here and I specified uh, one, uh, a 10 to 200 for our workload network. Going back, put it in here, put in the subnet mask, put in the 
put in the gateway, put in the DNS servers. Uh, I'm just using public DNS, Duh. in your case, probably your own DNS servers and my NTP server. And that's the configuration for the workload network. The next thing is we need to uh, add our content library. And there's our content library that we just created. Hit next. And the last thing is we uh, select the control plane VM size. So how big should the control plane VMs are? And you can create an additional um, DNS entry. Uh, this DNS entry will be put into the certificate as subject alternative name for the controller certificate so that you can refer to it via our certificate later. So in my case, that's super.com. And uh, you can switch this to tiny to save some space. Uh, be careful, this will change the network component here in the workload. If you go back to the workload, you can see it will switch this uh, again um, to, uh, to uh, basically switch this back to DHCP. You now need to make sure you can see it now switch to a slash 24 network. And now we need to put in the uh, IP address information again. If you do not want to go to a tiny environment like I do because I want to save some space, um, you do not need to do this uh, twice. Taking the uh, entry again, subnet mask is the same as previously. Gateway, DNS servers. And NTP. And that's it. Content library, nothing changed. Now Tiny is fine. And the entire configuration is uh, ready to install. Yeah. So what you see now here uh, are a few uh, steps. You can see it's installing the Tanzu components uh, and you will see a few errors during the installation, um, but that's just because it's a Kubernetes installation. So it's describing a desired state and until it's reached this desired state, it can take a few minutes and you will see a few errors perhaps in between, but that's totally fine. Um, the entire installation should take roughly uh, 20 to 40 minutes, depending on the performance of the storage. And once your uh, installation is up and running, you will see this with a green icon. You will see that um, everything is fine. So our installation finished. And as you can see, the control plane is up and running. We have an IP address from the front end network. And you can see the Kubernetes version that is used uh, within our uh, environment for the supervisor control plane. So if we go back to the inventory, you can see that we have now the supervisor control planes. We have the namespace construct and we have the two service engines that were uh, that have been rolled out by the uh, controller uh, to provide the front end services uh, for the supervisor control plane. OK, so uh, what we want to do now is we want to test our installation and we would like to create our own Kubernetes cluster. So what we do is we go back to workload management we go to the namespace and uh, we create a new namespace. We click on create namespace. We select our vSphere cluster that we want to use uh, and we create this um, new namespace. Let's call the namespace uh, uh, TKC test. We select our uh, workload network. We only, uh, we only created one, so that's fine, create. And uh, now we have the menu to actually create everything we need to do. So um, the first thing that we will do is we add uh, users to the environment. So hit uh, add permission. And as you can see, it's uh, showing me everything that the vCenter uses for a single sign-on. I could use a vSphere local user or I can use my Active Directory or LDAP environment. So in my case, I'm using the Active Directory or LDAP. Um, and I want to use uh, Cody 
Um, that's my developer that should be able to create a Kubernetes cluster. So I give him the edit role, say, okay. Uh, the next thing that we will do is we will assign storage and hit add storage. And there you see our storage policies. I will assign our Tanzu storage policy again. Uh, you can select multiple storage policies. Um, the next thing is we can uh, limit the CPU memory and storage that we want to use. And for storage, we can do this on a per on a global level or on a per storage class level. Um, as I only want to create a very small environment, I will not put in any resource limits at all. And the next thing is we can uh, uh, assign the VMs that we want to use. So add VM class. These are the default classes that are provided uh, during the installation. You can change them later. And in the next video, I will actually show all the details on that. Um, so what we do here is I say, I want to have a small, X small and medium VM type. Um, the best effort VMs are shared VMs. Whereas the guarantee classes are reserved instances where we reserve CPU and memory um, for these VMs. Uh, so, okay. And the last thing we will do is we assign the content library. So that's the content library is all the OVAs that hosts our Kubernetes distributions. Uh, subscribe this here. And now everything is set up. Um, we are good to go. So we'll be, if you go back to, uh, the inventory, you can see that here's our namespace and you see it's the exact same menu as uh, we would see under the workload management. Uh, nothing is in there, so it's empty at the moment. And what you do now is you copy the link and send it to the developer or you click on open um, so that we see the same landing page. You see that our landing page does not contain uh, a valid certificate, it's a self-signed certificate, um, but that's fine for us now. And what you do now is you download the plugin for the Kubernetes CLI. It contains, the download contains the cube uh, control as well as the vSphere plugin. It's two single binaries. Uh, we have it for Linux, for Windows and for Mac. I'm on a Mac. Um, so that's all I need to do for now. We download it, save it. So after you downloaded the uh, zip file, extract it, put it in your pass environment, or uh, uh, use everything from the same folder as, uh, as of right now so that you can actually execute the commands. So next step is you go to the GitHub repository and download the example files. Uh, the link to the uh, repository is uh, in the description below. Um, once you've done that, um, you can start creating your first cluster. So if you go into the cluster folder, uh, there's only one file in there. That's our simple cluster file. And uh, that's the cluster that we want to create now. Uh, if you have a look at it, this is our cluster uh, description. So our deployment file for our cluster. Um, the name is a uh, simple cluster. It's a tons of Kubernetes cluster object. Um, our namespace is TKC test. If you named the uh, namespace uh, differently, please change it here so that you can actually deploy the cluster. We want to create a single uh, control plane VM. Uh, we are using the smallest VM type possible. So we're using best effort small. We're using our tons of storage. If you create a different storage policy, please change this, this here as well. Uh, this is the uh, uh, Kubernetes version that we want to create. We want to create a single worker pool with only one worker in it. Uh, also with the smallest uh, VM type possible. We're using the same um, storage type here and also the same Kubernetes version here. So that should be the same. And that's all we need to do. So quit this again. And now what we do is we need to lock into our environment. Um, so we are using kube control vSphere lock-in. So this now the plugin is, uh, is used. And for what do we need to specify? If you just hit enter, you see we need to specify our user. Our user, in my case, is Cody. Please use uh, your user let you select it for the namespace. Um, uh, you need to specify the server address. The server address, if we go back here, is our landing page. So just copy uh, the address again. 
and then uh, as I don't have a real certificate and probably uh, yes the same we need to do insecure skip TLS verify and now it will ask you for your AD LDAP user or your user password that's uh, Now you see the login wa was successful. It will automatically update my kubeconfig and you see my Kubernetes config contains a little bit more. There's our supervisor cluster. Uh, there is our TKC test namespace. And what we do now is we switch to our Kubernetes uh, TKC test namespace. So we will keep control config use context and it's called TKC test in my case, switching to that context. And all we need to do now is we need to apply our cluster config. So keep uh, control apply and then simple cluster YAML. <clears throat> and this will now uh, apply our cluster config to our Kubernetes environment, uh, to our Tanzu environment. If we go back to the vCenter, uh, you can actually see the it's creating the folder, it's creating the deployment of our Tanzu environment. You can see here's the cluster object. And as this is the first time, it will actually download the files from our content library and store them in uh, on our storage and then deploy the VMs with it. Um, if you select it, uh, if you didn't select when needed, all the OVAs would be uh, on the storage already and the the initial deployment will be initial uh, a little bit faster. In my case, I just need to wait a few minutes more. Um, you can see now the cluster is being created. This is the control plane VM. It will automatically create a load balancer for the API endpoint uh, as well. So um, we will just skip to the part where it's, uh, where it's finished. So the installation finished and we now have the control plane VM as well as the worker VM. And if we go now back to the CLI, so our next step is to actually um, see the cluster on the command line. So keep control get TKC for Tanzu Kubernetes cluster. You see there's our cluster uh, and it's the name. Uh, we have a single control plane and single worker, our current Kubernetes version and the next upgrade for our Kubernetes cluster. So we, there would be an uh, upgrade available, but we will not do this right now. So how do we get access to the cluster? So the next step will be to log into that cluster. So we use kubectl vSphere login again. And you can see there are two additional parameters that you need to specify to get access to the cluster. You need to specify the cluster name as well as the cluster namespace. The reason for that is that the cluster name only needs to be unique on a per namespace level, not on a global level. So what we do is uh, we will specify the same command as before, but add these two commands as well. So our user Cody again, our server again, and insecure skip till it's verify. And we need to specify our two parameters. One is the Tanzu Kubernetes cluster name. That's simple cluster. And we need to specify our cluster namespace. In our case, that's TKC test. Put in our password. And now you can see we have the simple cluster context as well, and we can switch into that cluster. Now we are within the simple cluster. And if we do cube control, get pods minus A to get all pods. You can see we are uh, inside our Kubernetes cluster. We have the cluster admin role and ha uh, are now able to use this cluster. So the next step is that we will deploy a very simple sample application just to see that everything is working. Um, so we go one folder up into the one here. And there's a very simple uh, application. It's already hosted on the Docker app. And all we need to do is basically execute two deployment files. So the first thing that we will do is control apply namespace role. 
What this will do is it will create uh, the tensor test namespace. It will create a service account and role binding so that we have the PSP so pod security policies that we're using that correctly and that we can deploy our application afterwards. So keep control, apply minus F, simple app LB for load balancer. And this will create the deployment and create the service for us and if we now do uh cube control <clears throat> control get pods minus namespace tanzu test zero one you can see that our two pods are already already up and running be aware of this these images are being pulled from the docker hub now you can see that the uh, pods are actually up and running. Everything is fine. The only thing that we need to find out now is the IP address of our load balancing service. Cube control get SVC and, and now tons of namespace. And you see there's the type load balancer that, we, that was created. So this is uh, created by the uh, NSX advanced load balancer. And this is the external IP address from our front end network where we will reach our application on. So if we go back now and switch to the front end page of our application, you can see this is the landing page of our application. It's just a very simple, simple Hello World application uh, with a lot of resources for Kub Academy to learn more about Kubernetes for the Tensor Developer Portal, just the quick links and to show that our application and cluster is working. And this was the first part of our series on how to install tons of Kubernetes and use tons of Kubernetes uh, in combination with the NSX Advanced Load Balancer. Uh, I hope you liked the video. Uh, if so, please leave a comment and a like and see you next time.